It is 530 and we want to take a deeper dive right into the landmark affirmative action ruling that overturned more than 40 years of legal precedent. The Supreme Court striking down affirmative action policies at two universities, effectively ending the use of race as a consideration in college admissions nationwide. This ruling by the conservative high court will ver reverberate through the American College admissions process, perhaps for generations. So how to have a way to level the playing field now? Reaction pouring in this evening from across the country, including the White House. ABC's M. Wen is live outside the Supreme Court. M. Sandra Bill, President Biden slammed the Supreme Court's decision to strike down affirmative action in higher education, urging colleges and universities not to abandon their pursuit of greater diversity on campus. The Supreme Court heard two cases challenging the admissions policies at Harvard and the University of North Carolina. The high court's conservative majority ruled six to three to end the use of race as a factor in college admissions. But I propose consideration is a new standard where colleges take into account the adversity a student has overcome when selecting among qualified applicants. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote the opinion saying both schools violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. The liberal dissenters fired back saying this ruling rolls back decades of precedent and momentous progress. Roberts clarified that students could still include their experiences about race in the essays, but schools couldn't use those essays to circumvent today's ruling. The conservative advocacy group that sought to overturn affirmative action argued that the two schools discriminated against Asian American applicants though both institutions have denied those allegations. And at the end of his address, President Biden was asked about the Supreme Court and whether or not it has legitimacy, to which he answered, this is not a normal court. In Washington, outside the Supreme Court, I'm M. Wynn, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. M., thank you for that. Make no mistake, today's ruling is something that will have a huge impact, shaking up the makeup and diversity of college students on campuses all over the country. In fact, according to enrollment data from 2021, states with restrictions on race-based admissions have 12% lower campus diversity scores. And that means big impacts here at home too. In fact, in the tri-state area, every major university, that's 65 schools, before today used race as a determining factor in college admission. With more on how this is going to shake the foundation of college campuses, here's Eyewitness News reporter Darla Miles. We will comply with the court's decision but it does not change our values. The president of Harvard, Claudine Gray, addressing the Supreme Court decision in the case the university has been fighting for almost a decade. It comes six months after she became the first black president of Harvard. I know that you have a lot of questions, we do too. In the coming weeks, we'll be working to understand the decision and its implications for our policies. That is the big question, not just at Harvard, but how do colleges and universities achieve diversity moving forward? Mamie Voigt is the president of the nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, the Institute for Higher Education Policy, which is dedicated to expanding college access to underserved communities. Aside from the affirmative action policies and the, the decision today about race conscious admissions, we know that there are many policies and practices in use today at colleges and universities across the country that are inhibiting access to college. This 2021 report, the most important door that will ever open, the organization says colleges and universities need to rethink the enrollment funnel and lays out other admission roadblocks like legacy admissions, early decision and recruitment. The ways in which institutions decide which communities to recruit their students in, whether they're recruiting at community colleges where students are twice as likely to be people of color. Advocates now doubling down to keep the spirit of affirmative action alive. At Harvard, it has also strengthened our resolve to continue opening doors. Darla Miles, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. As we have mentioned, the vote was 6-3 with the three liberal judges dissenting. In her dissenting opinion, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, a New York native and Princeton graduate, wrote, quote, the devastating impact of this decision cannot be overstated. And that is not all, she wrote. 
As someone who has admittedly benefited from affirmative action when she applied to college, Sonia Sotomayor wrote, quote, the court cements a superficial rule of colorblindness as a constitutional principle in an endemically segregated society where race has always mattered and continues to matter. She also blamed her conservative colleagues' use of the landmark Brown versus Board of Education decision, describing it as nothing but revisionist history and an affront to the legacy of late Justice Thurgood Marshall. Justice Sotomayor also argued that race neutrality, quote, will entrench racial segregation in higher education because racial inequality will persist so long as it is ignored. And despite her biting language, Justice Sotomayor ended her dissent in a defiant tone, writing, the pursuit of racial diversity will go on. Although the court has stripped out almost all use of race in college admissions, universities can and should continue to use all available tools to meet society's need for diversity in education. One of the elected officials, one of the many elected officials, weighing in on the Supreme Court's blockbuster cutbacks on affirmative action, the highest ranking Democrat in Congress, Hakeem Jeffries, a native of Brooklyn who views this ruling as a setback for so many reasons. I interviewed him late this afternoon. It was a devastating decision uh, that will hurt significantly the ability of colleges and universities uh, to promote the type of racial diversity that benefits everyone. It benefits the university, it benefits the campus, it benefits all of the students and the faculty. And ultimately, having a diverse student body benefits the country because it prepares our students for an increasingly diverse country and certainly an increasingly diverse world in terms of our integration related to the global economy. Diversity here in America is a strength. It is an economic strength, it's a cultural strength, it's a competitive strength for us. Uh, and that is why universities have been considering for decades racial and ethnic and geographic and income diversity in terms of trying to have a campus community that reflects the United States of America. And it's a shame uh, that an extreme Supreme Court majority has once again decided they were going to try to jam their right-wing ideology down the throats of the American people. But politics plays a role in all this. I was going to ask you before all this happened uh, uh, in our, for our show and up close, I was going to say, well, talk about the politics of Mr. Trump trying to get back into the White House. And a lot of people said, oh, look, you know, he's got all these legal problems. It's not going to work. He's, a lot of people say it's, it's time out for that. But that's not really what he's about anymore. His legacy is what the Supreme Court did, having three members that he appointed, three justices. Uh, how important is this? Uh, what does it mean for Donald Trump? What does it mean for politics in America? Make no mistake, this is Donald Trump's uh, extreme Supreme Court majority that stripped away reproductive freedom for women and now, in this particular instance, uh, has robbed the ability of colleges and universities to consider racial diversity in a manner that benefits all of America and our competitiveness on the global stage. This is the type of extremism that we have seen since the emergence of the 45th president of the United States of America, Trump, and the type of Trumpism uh, that has taken hold in the United States House of Representatives uh, and all across the country. So while political reaction has been split, as you would expect, between Democrats and Republicans, what about students? Hey, here's reaction from current college students who are both for and against affirmative action. It makes me feel upset. Well, I think this is a win for students all across America. I am deeply disheartened by this news. By getting rid of affirmative action, now we look at the individual student and what they've accomplished, and we can look at what barriers they've overcome. But we, sh but we view them as an individual first and foremost. Race for people that look like me, race for Latino students, it's not just a characteristic. It's something that determines the funding that I get, the representation that I lack. They're really shutting the doors in the faces of those students whose ancestors built those schools. And there are really so many better ways to judge students based on their character, based on their accomplishments. Race, it's just 
it's just how you're born and you, you can't change it. There is no way that you can extract race from admissions and still call it a holistic admissions policy. It's very um, short-sighted to not recognize that regardless if you're white, Asian, Black, Hispanic, race does have an impact on your life, on your identity, and how you navigate through the United States. Stay with Eyewitness News for the latest on this landmark decision. We'll have more on air and online at ABC 7 and Y, including tonight on Eyewitness News Extra Time. We're talking to the president of one of the nation's oldest civil rights organizations that defended affirmative action before the Supreme Court. His reaction to today's decision at 630, streaming only on Eyewitness News Extra Time.